Hey, I'm Dr. Cat. Welcome to my little digital world here. I wanted to share with you something that I learned this morning. So without further ado, let's dive in. So I've been working on this website for some time and I want to explain to you the little problem that I've been meeting every single time I click on one of the links. So on the schedule page, it would take some time. Like before I fixed it, it would take what seemed like forever for it to load. And I did some internet sleuthing. I went to my search engine of choice and I would enter in search queries, you know, again and again until I figured out the right combination and I saved a couple of pages and um, read through them, sorted them into useful and not useful uh, groups of stuff and then from there I, I then start picking apart advice for how to proceed forward with fixing this. So what I found out, and I'm going to share with you what I found out, um, if you give me a quick moment to switch over. Alright, so I found three different blog posts that were like really, really useful for different reasons. Two of them gave me information that I needed um, to make good decisions, and then the third was one that like actually gave me a how-to tutorial for how to do things. Okay, so the, the first one I wanted to share is one that talks about the landscape of serverless uh, technology. So serverless cloud services are hot. I'm quoting this article or this blog post verbatim, except when they're not. Um, why are they not always hot? Well, when they become cold. So this is like if, for instance, like imagine you were uh, going out to your car on a really cold snowy day and you're just like, oh, you know, I get in, the seat's cold, it's just not fun. Well, um, you, what you can do, like a trick that some uh, savvy New Yorkers do is they will start their car, let it run, you know, with the heater on for a little bit, and then when they go into the car, sit for their drive, they're comfortable, All right? You could do something similar with that concept uh, with uh, the server technology. Um, so what this person was sharing was his findings from running different experiments to find out exactly when the server decides to turn off and you know what is that time interval. So depending on which company um, and their product that you go with, it's going to be slightly different. What we're interested in is um, Google Cloud Platform because I'm using Firebase for the website, to host the website, and Firebase is a subsidiary of the Google Cloud platform. So what he found was a cold start can happen as soon as three minutes after the last request ever, or it could last a little bit longer. But you know, as programmers, we tend to want to um, focus on building a solution that lets us remain lazy. So you know, what this means, what this translates to, is maybe we want to find a solution that extends that three minutes um, to be a much wider range, but we probably have to act on it somehow in under three minutes. So um, that'll become useful information in a little bit. This other blog post that I found actually gave a name to that issue, um, the cold start and they define it, so, or he, he or she defines it. So that was helpful to like really, you know, put a face to the name, so to speak. And um, what a cold start means is that you have to run the instance, you know, start up the server, compute that function, and then you can get whatever data out of it. So that's cold start, it means you go into that cold car and you have to wait a little bit before it becomes comfortable. So that's what creates that really slow um, data request on the website. Okay, the rest of this article wasn't that interesting except for the one part 
somewhere about setting a every single minute as the setting and I glanced at it and I was like oh here we go every minute it's like eh, meh, you know I file it away but don't act on it just yet um, the other thing that I noticed was he was able to he or she was able to uh, I should say they they were able to use a interval so I thought okay that's useful I don't know how but that's useful then finally this third article actually showed me how to do like it wasn't describing just what I need to know but it kind of like reinforced all the what I need to know about cold starts and then now like how to actually fix that cold start so the um, three different blog posts kind of just touched upon the technology um, that older folks such as myself and, and uh, uh, older generations may know of called cron tab so this is an automated machine type of machine level uh, system level uh, feature that's available in pretty much almost any machine especially Linux based um, but whatever let's let's not go into that history basically what we can do is set an automated action and we can schedule that so what we can use is another product from the Google Cloud platform uh, space and that is called the cloud scheduler so here's the website if you're looking for it this is what you should um, find and you would just go to the console you know to, to configure it so I'm going to point out the page and the documentation that I think was the most useful um, you know in terms of understanding is it exactly like cron tab and it's very very close so there is just the standard format and each of these asterisks represents a certain type of information and they're all separated by white space okay so that's the thing to to get um, your head around if it's the first time you look at cron format it's the white space that separates the different um, characteristics here and it always goes in the same order so what you would do is you would go to the dashboard here the console area and you would create a new job okay instead of doing that because I've already set this up I'm gonna open it um, so what you would do is give it a name and then you would fill in all the information so it's basically what this screenshot captures and the authors of these blog posts do mention other products you can use if you don't want to stick with the Google Cloud platform space but me being you know like it's all under one uh, umbrella works for me I'll give it a go so I filled in the form on that console area um, and then um, I gave it actually let's go back there so this is where I would try to figure out the exact thing to put and because I don't remember exactly off the top of my head and I, I was a little lazy I decided I'd look for a translation type of tool there's quite a few out there I would go into here and then just kind of get get a sense of like how does this translate into the logic that I actually want in plain English you know just to make it easier to understand so here what I have the special things I have is a step value so divide by two to indicate every two minutes I remember how I said in this article it was like it could be as quick as three minutes that the server turns off um, if it's idle for three minutes it'll turn off right so we don't want it to idle for three minutes so every two minutes I'm saying run this cron job and then I'm also setting here a range of values from late morning 11 a.m. this is using military time to approximate bedtime so that's how I um, uh, was able to use this idea from this other blog post about using you know start and end time so that I'm not running it 24 7 but during really like peak hour times so I have that set up and then the next part is to specify what action I want this cron uh, scheduler to run for me so it is this URL right here is exactly the same as uh, when I go to this page what I did was I opened up the network tab using DevTools. Um, 
let's go back to that window. So I opened up the DevTools tab and I went to the network tab. Um, I did the refresh and I limited only to the XHR just to make it easy to find. And that's where I'm able to copy the link um, address and then paste it in right there. And so I didn't configure anything with the advanced settings. It was not needed. Um, and I'm going to cancel here because it's already set and it's already running. So let me explain a little bit the extent of the problem from before. So this is what I have shown just like a few seconds ago. Um, let me go back to something from earlier today. I use this filter here on the left to, you know, say exactly which thing that I want to limit it to. And what I saw here explains why it was so slow. It took 1.29 seconds in order to figure out that the server, the backend server was not ready to give me information. So then it had to like go visit again and pull the information and, and then because it had to wait for the server to like get started, put on its makeup, get ready, you know, then it was like 1.81 seconds and altogether if we add that up, it is over three seconds, which in the web development uh, space is a lifetime. So we don't want it that that um, um, slow. We actually want things to run a lot quicker, maybe in the like one digit or double digit millisecond, not second range, because millisecond is a smaller value than second. Okay, so going back to the current, um, you know, after setting the cron scheduler to be running, uh, what we can see now is the time for it is 58 milliseconds. So it's a lot, lot quicker. And so now going in like myself, every time I work with similar technologies, um, what I want to say is like the reflection and what I've learned from this is that anytime I want to use a serverless um, service, then I'm going to have to keep in mind there's this cold storage option. And depending on the provider of that service, it may vary. So I just have to make sure to always like look up a uh, reference and find out what exactly uh, that time interval might be. And then make sure I set the cron scheduler um, for whichever uh, brand that I'm using at that time, get that set, make sure it's running, test it again. Um, anyway, so to wrap things up, I just want to say it was a very successful venture here uh, to get this uh, page, this little thing fixed, and I'm very pleased. And so just going back to the purpose of this video, um, I am testing out this system this format, um, this workflow. If you like this video, please smash that like button for me. And then also if you want to hear notifications of more stuff, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll be posting more soon. Um, and you know, let me know what sort of topics you might be interested in um, and, and so forth. So we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.